Bambolab PETG HF filament. Do you really never need PLA again with this? If you want to know whether this filament is much easier to use than conventional PETG and whether you will never use PLA again in the future, then this video is exactly right for you. But if you are already totally confused by all these abbreviations, don't worry, I felt the same way when I started. That's why in this video I will explain step by step the difference between PETG and PLA filament and also show you what makes the PETG HF from Bamboo Lab special. Don't throw your money out of the window, watch this video and at the end you will decide which filament is right for you. Before we take a closer look at the PETG HF filament from Bamboo Lab, I think it's important that we first clarify the difference between PLA filament and PETG filament. PLA has basically become the standard filament in 3D printing and for good reason. It's cost effective, made from renewable raw materials, it's biodegradable to a degree and most importantly it's super easy to print with. But what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, you don't need a special 3D printer to use PLA. Every single 3D printer for home use can process PLA and will deliver more or less good results with it. The reason is that PLA doesn't need high temperatures or an enclosure for printing. It's also forgiving when print parameters like temperature and speed aren't optimally set. You always get a relatively good result. Sounds like the perfect filament, right? So why are there even other filaments besides PLA? Well, PETG in particular is known to outperform PLA in three important areas. First, imagine you're printing a phone holder. You get in your car in the morning and drive to the lake. Unfortunately, there is no shaded parking spot. And when you come back in the evening, you'll probably already know what happened. Your phone holder has turned into a lump of plastic. And that's because PLA isn't particularly temperature stable. PETG, on the other hand, can result temperatures about 10 to 15 degrees higher. And that makes the difference in the summer when you want to use 3D prints in your vehicle. And it also solves a second problem. When you print things you want to use outdoors like this beautiful birdhouse, sooner or later the greatest enemy of any plastic will destroy your 3D print. I'm talking about the sun, specifically its UV radiation. PLA is not UV stable, but PETG is. And when it comes to sudden impact loads, PETG also has the edge because it can handle this type of stress much better than PLA. PLA is rather brittle and while it can handle higher overall loads, not when they are applied suddenly. On top of that, PETG is also more abrasion resistant and therefore doesn't wear out as quickly when you print parts that move against each other like gears. Sounds perfect, right? But now you will ask yourself, if PETG has so many advantages over PLA, why doesn't everyone use PETG all the time? Well, if there is light, there is also shadow. If you ever printed with PETG, you've probably already experienced its disadvantages. I can still remember my first experience with PETG very well. The surfaces of the prints just didn't look as good as I was used to with PLA. And there were little strings everywhere on the print. But what happened? Besides the fact that PETG has to be printed at much higher temperature than PLA, making it more fluid and more prone to dripping from the nozzle, there is another important aspect. Storage. PETG has much higher storage requirements. Plastics in general absorb moisture from the ambient air. PETG does this much more than PLA. And the problem is that the moisture in the filament has a totally negative effect on the printing results. And that's exactly why filaments are always delivered sealed with a little desiccant pack. The problem is you can't rely on fresh filament from the package actually being dry. That's why, in my opinion, if you regularly use PETG, you absolutely need the following two things. First, a way to dry filament. I use a simple filament dryer that removes moisture from the filament using warm air over several hours. Second, you need a way to store filament dry. I recommend storage containers like these and you can additionally put a bag with these desiccant beads in there. You will find links to the product I recommend in the video descriptions. But before you go shopping right away, I want to mention one last point that's a serious disadvantage of PETG compared to PLA. And that's the print speed. PETG has to be printed much slower than PLA to achieve a good result. And I don't mean just a little slower, I mean really much slower. 
Just open a print file in your slicer like my standard model here. If I now set PLA and let the model slice, the software shows me an approximate print time of 50 minutes. But if I now change the filament to PETG, it comes out to a print time of 1 hour and 28 minutes. That's over 50% more print time and if you print a lot or if you are as impatient as I am, that's clearly too long. And this is exactly where the Bamboo Lab PETG HF comes into play. The HF stands for high flow, which means high flow rate. The flow rate in 3D printing indicates how much volume of filament is pushed through the nozzle in one second. And this indirectly also limits the print speed because the print head naturally can't move faster than new material is supplied. The Bamboo Lab PETG HF promises to have a similar high flow rate as normal PLA and thus beat regular PETG by lengths. But that's not all. It also promises to create a matte surface finish like we are more familiar with from PLA. Prints with regular PETG often have a glossy surface and I personally think that doesn't look quite as high quality. But the really best thing is that Bamboo Lab doesn't even charge a higher price for this super filament than for normal PETG or PLA. If you buy more than 4 rolls at once in the shop and use the raffle spools that I showed you in this video, you will get a very attractive price per kilogram. The only drawback is that you currently only have a choice of 8 colors which isn't really that much. Nevertheless, we have a filament with a very good price, combined with printing properties that we've only known from PLA until now, and the advantages of PETG like UV and temperature resistance. Sounds great, right? And so you don't have to buy a pick and a poke, I bought a few rolls right when this filament appeared in the Bamboo Lab shop and examined for you. For my test, I will have the PETG HF from Bamboo Lab compete against a regular PETG from Polymaker brand, as well as a matte black PLA from Bamboo Lab. Unfortunately, when the PETG HF was released, Bamboo Lab completely removed the regular PETG Basic from their shop, which is why I had to switch to another manufacturer. But the Polymaker brand is also among my absolute favorite filament manufacturers and is known for its very good quality. Now the test just needs a suitable print model. It should be challenging, not take too long and clearly show the weaknesses of PETG like unclean surface and the pulling of fine strings. I chose this basket with a honeycomb structure and first had the PETG HF compete against the PLA matte black from Bamboo Lab. I selected the standard settings in the slicer and didn't change my parameters. Before printing, I dried all filaments according to the manufacturer specification to create identical starting conditions. The first surprise was actually waiting for me in the slicer, because the PTG HF has a print time that's actually only one minute longer than regular PLA. So Bumble Lab actually didn't exaggerate with the high flow designation. But what good is the fastest print if the print quality doesn't match? The model I choose is challenging in that it has curves and overhangs in the upper area that won't be printed cleanly if the settings aren't right. Furthermore, the honeycomb structure is demanding because the printer has to constantly start and stop the filament flow. Since PETG is very fluid, it tends to continue flowing from the nozzle during the print pauses and that's when these fine strings, also known as stringing, come from. And you can see exactly these strings here on the printed model. There's just one problem. This isn't the PETG HF, but the regular PLA from Bamboo Lab. And the result actually surprised me. It's exactly the opposite of what I've expected. The PETG HF from Bamboo Lab produces an even better print result in the same time. There really are no strings visible, the side areas are also well printed. Here and there are small defects, but that occurs with the PLA matte just as well. Unfortunately, the real matte surface look promised by Bamboo Lab didn't materialize and the print does have a slight gloss to it, which is very noticeable, especially compared to the PLA matte in black. Overall, however, I'm more than pleasantly surprised by the print results with the PETG HF and this becomes especially clear when compared to the Polymaker PETG. Because if we now set the print profile for the Polymaker PETG in the Bamboo Studio Slicer software, you will immediately notice the more than one hour long print time. Looking at the print result, you will see that while the results from the Polymaker PETG isn't really bad, it's no comparison to the Bamboo Lab PETG HF.
Despite the much longer print time and slower printing, an unclean surface has formed on the inner curves and here and there are a few strings are visible. Filament accumulations have formed on individual struts of the honeycomb that really don't look nice. I know these effects from printing with PETG and the Polymaker filament isn't a bad product because of this. However, this comparison clearly shows that PETG HF is in a completely different league when it comes to print speed and print quality. But maybe it's not as it seems and BambooLab is just leading us down the garden path? Maybe PETG HF isn't a miracle filament at all, but BambooLab has simply optimized the settings so that the print time is much shorter and the quality is still maintained. To find out, I will now simply use the settings from the BambooLab PETG HF and print the Polymaker PETG filament with them. First, I open Bamboo Studio and click on the small pencil next to the filament to look at what parameters are set for each filament. Two settings are particularly important here. The first setting we look at is the max volumetric speed and that's the maximum filament flow I mentioned earlier. This indirectly also limits the print speed since the print head, as already mentioned, can't move faster than filament is supplied. We see that this value for the Polymaker PETG is only half as large as for the BambooLab PETG HF and that's why the print speed is much much slower. It's important that we take the Polymaker profile as a basis because as you've surely noticed the Polymaker PETG is printed at a much higher temperature than the BambooLab filament. And to rule this out as an influence we will take this profile as a basis and simply increase the max volumetric flow. This insight regarding the printing temperature, by the way, also gives us a hint about what BambooLab has done with the material to achieve a better result. Let's first compare the now faster printed Polymaker PETG with the slower printed Polymaker PETG. It's noticeable that the print quality on the outside is significantly worse and even more strings have formed on the inside. The overall quality is simply not acceptable. If we now look again at the print with the PETG HF from BambooLab in comparison, which was printed over an hour faster with the same printer and still has much much better quality, then I think it becomes clear to what extent the BambooLab filament is miles ahead of conventional PETG when you take print speed and print quality as the standard. But that's not the end of the video because I had another idea and the result of this test really knocked my socks off. We have established so far that with PETG print speed apparently has a strong influence on the quality of the print result. The BambooLab PETG HF is able to deliver very good quality despite high print speed. But what happens if I simply give the high speed filament more time to print? How does that affect the print quality and can I increase it even further? I open the Bamboo Studio Slicer software again and first look at the profile of PETG Basic from BambooLab. It's printed at a temperature of 255 degrees Celsius with a maximum volumetric flow of 13 cubic millimeters per second. I now transfer this value to the profile of BambooLab PETG HF and this makes the print take much much longer at four and a half hours but when I open the printer door to look at the result I couldn't believe my eyes. But just see yourself. At this point at the latest, the BambooLab PETG HF filament has moved way up on the list of my favorite filaments. All details are super cleanly executed, the surface basically has no defects and strings didn't occur at all. If the appearance of your prints is the most important to you, then you can now turn off the video with a clear consent because I think everything has been said about that. The BambooLab PTG HF can even produce higher print quality with the slow settings than we are used to from PLA. But if you're now wondering where the catch is, then you now better not turn off yet, but take a look at the datasheet with me because two characteristic values particularly caught my attention here. The bending stiffness, referred to here as bending modulus, and the impact strength, referred to here as impact strength. If we first compare the PETG BASIC with PLA BASIC, it's noticeable that PETG has a lower bending stiffness and higher impact strength. Remember how I mentioned at the beginning that while PETG isn't quite as stable as PLA, it can handle impact loads much better? That's quite characteristic of these two materials and that's exactly what these values express. 
PLTG will bend more under the same load than PLA, which is much stiffer. On the other hand, PETG can absorb impacts much better because it's not as brittle as PLA and doesn't break immediately. And what about PETG HF? Well, as you can see, it's exactly in the middle between these two materials. So it's basically still a PETG with its advantages, but it seems to have been modified by Bumble Lab so that it can be printed at a lower temperature and thus approaches PLA more closely in terms of material behavior. But honestly now, should you even worry about such detail? For my part, I will definitely reach for PETG HF much more often now when the appearance and durability of my prints are particularly important to me. In my opinion, Bamboo Lab has really created a fantastic filament here that has the potential to definitely replace PLA as the standard filament. It prints excellently, delivers much better print result and it even has the PETG typical advantages like UV and temperature resistance. These are the much more important factors in my opinion because, let's be honest here, who amongst us really designs their print based on characteristic values in datasheets or what do you think? Whether you agree with me or not, I'm already looking forward to the discussion in the comments. And also check out this video if you want to learn more about filaments, because it's at least as exciting.